Welcome to part 18 of this Excel VBA user forms tutorial. In this video we're going to explain how to enable and use the date picker and month view controls on your forms. The video is all about how you can make date selection easy compared to the way we've done it so far in this series where we've used the basic text box. So I'm going to explain first of all what the date picker and month view controls are and what they look like and you'll immediately see how much more useful they can be compared to a text box. Then we're going to check that you've actually got these controls installed because they're not actually a part of Excel by default. If you haven't got the controls installed, we're going to explain how you can download the file, how you can extract and move it to the correct location, how you can register the file with Windows, and then how you can add these extra controls into the Form Controls toolbox. Right at the end of the video, we'll explain how you can quickly draw a couple of these controls in a form, and how you can also reference their values in code. So, quite a useful technique here, let's get started. So far in this series of videos, whenever we've wanted to enter a date into a form, we've relied on using a basic text box and then we've added lots of validation code to the text box to make sure that what the user has entered is a valid date and that the date was within a certain range, and the end result hasn't been particularly attractive or elegant. So what we're going to do in this video is explain how to use a couple of additional controls, one's called a date and time picker, which is this small sort of combo look box looking thing, and the other's called a month view control, which is this slightly larger calendar looking thing over here. The, uh, the great thing about these controls is they're, they're much easier to control exactly what the user does in terms of picking dates. So if I click on the drop down arrow for the date time picker, I can scroll between different months. I can also select a different month and quickly jump to it, or I can select a different year indeed and scroll up and down the years. And whenever I've picked a date, that date is the one that's selected and, and goes into, is stored in the date time picker. Likewise for the month view control, it takes up a little bit more space, but it works in exactly the same way, or, uh, and I can scroll between the different months and choose different years and choose different months nice and nice and easily, and then whenever I click on a date in the grid, that's the value that's stored in the control. I've written a little bit of basic code that will just display the values of these controls. If I click the command button, I see a message box that displays the values I've selected in these controls. They're really handy little tools to have. The downside is, of course, that they're not actually part of Excel or, or Office. They're not installed automatically alongside Office anymore. They used to be in, in much older versions of Office. So this video is going to explain how you can, first of all, check if these are available, and if they're not, how you can install them and use them. One little caveat to mention, this will only work if you're running a 32-bit edition of Office. It won't work on 64-bit editions of Office. The, the edition of Windows you're using doesn't matter, it runs on both 32 and 64-bit editions of Windows, but it must be a 32-bit edition of Office that you're using, otherwise this simply won't work. Okay, so bearing all that in mind, let's get stuck in, first of all, checking whether you've got these controls installed on your machine in the first place. The first thing you should probably do is check that you don't already have these controls installed. And the easiest way to do that is from the Visual Basic Editor. So with a brand new blank workbook, I'm going to head to the VB Editor, and then we'll need to insert a new user form into the project. So let's do that. Right click, insert user form, and that should make the toolbox appear automatically. If it doesn't, you can turn the toolbox on, of course, with the toolbox button on the toolbar. When you've got the toolbox, you can right click on the background somewhere and then choose additional controls. And this should display a dialog box listing out all the available extra controls you could add into the toolbox. What you're looking for in here is one of two different things. You're looking for something either called the Microsoft Date and Time Picker or the Microsoft um, month view control. Now the controls are listed alphabetically so you can clearly see in my case that I don't have either the month view control or the Microsoft date and time picker. So that's a good start. I, I know that I don't have that, that, that set of controls already installed. So let's cancel out this dialog box and then look at how you can go about installing it. Firstly then, you'll need to obtain a copy of the correct file. And the file you're after has this wonderfully catchy name of mscomct2.ocx. Now it used to be quite easy to obtain because Microsoft made it available from their support site. But sadly they no longer maintain this page. They, uh, they've actually deactivated the link that you used to be able to click on to download the file we're after, which is mscomct2.cab, so it's part of a cabinet file. So if I click on that link, sadly, we don't end up with anything useful at all. So you're going to need to do a little bit of googling here to uh, to find the file you need, and uh, without wanting to patronise people too much, if you see it, search for mscomct2.ocx, and then you'll find a variety of files from which you can download the uh, the file from. Once you've obtained it, you'll need to save the file somewhere sensible, and it so happens that I've saved mine to my desktop. So here we go. Here's my mscomct2.cab file sitting safely on my desktop. Now a cab file or a cabinet file contains a number of compressed files, and if you want to see what's stored in it, you simply need to double click on the file to open it. So in there we'll see we've got this mscomct2.ocx file. 
To extract it from the cabinet, all you need to do is right-click on the file and choose Extract. And then you'll need to choose a location to store the file in. I'm just going to temporarily place the file on my desktop. So if I choose the desktop and then click Extract, we'll find that the OCX file gets sits alongside the cab file on my desktop. I can browse back to the desktop there as well, so we can see it there clearly as well. Now the folder that you need to move the MSCOM CT2 OCX file to depends on whether you're running a 32-bit or a 64-bit edition of Windows. To get started, let's browse to the Windows installation folder. So in my case, that's in my C drive and it's in the Windows folder, which is the standard place to install Windows. And then if I start scrolling down, if you're looking, if you're running a 32-bit edition of Windows, you're looking for a folder called System32. If, however, you're running a 64-bit edition of Windows, you're looking for the SysWow64 folder. So my Windows version is, uh, or edition is 64-bit, so I'm going to go to the SysWow64 folder, and then all I need to do is click and drag to move the MSCOM CT2 OCX file into it. So I can just click and drag from the desktop and move it directly into that folder. I'll need to confirm that I want to do that, so I can click Continue, and then I'll find my, my file sits alongside all the other DLLs and, and other files in that folder. The next step is to register the file we've just copied to the correct location, and to do that we'll need to open up a command prompt. So the simplest way to do that, I think, is if you search for a file, so if I hold down the Windows key and press S for search, or I could have just, of course, hit the little magnifying glass in Windows 10, and if you search for something called CMD, that should bring up either the CMD application or the command prompt app. We need to run this as an administrator, so I'm going to right-click on the link and choose Run as Administrator, and then choose Yes to allow that to make changes to my computer. And the next thing that that will help us is to change the directory to the one that we've just copied the file to. So mine's pointed to the system32 directory at the moment. So what I want to do is change the directory by saying cd and then I'm going to say c colon backslash windows backslash syswow64. If I hit enter then I've changed my directory to that folder and then the command that's important to register the file we've just copied across. We're going to say reg svr32 and then the name of the file that we're interested in, which is mscomct2.ocx. And if we hit enter to execute that, we'll hopefully find a little success message. So there we go, we've successfully registered the file we've copied across. At that point, I can simply hit OK, close down the command prompt, and indeed close down the Windows Explorer window. Now, if all of that's worked properly, you should simply be able to go straight back to the VB editor, find the toolbox next to your user form, right click on its background and choose additional controls again and then from the list you ought to find you've now got access to a Microsoft date and time picker control and there it is. So you'll see if you select that um, item in the list you'll see that it points to the file that you've just installed and registered so I can check the box next to that one. I'm also going to have a quick look at something called the Microsoft uh, month view control as well. So let's find the Microsoft month view control as part of the same same file, the, uh, the OCX MSCOM CT2 file. So I'm going to check the box next to that one as well. If I then click OK, I've now got a couple of extra f um, objects, a couple of extra controls sitting on my toolbox. From this point on, using the additional controls is exactly like using any of the pre-existing controls that we've used in this tutorial series so far. So if I wanted to draw a date time picker, I can click on the DT Picker tool and then just click somewhere on the form to draw one. The DT Picker is designed to take the minimum amount of space up on the form, so if I just reduce its height so it looks more like a combo box. Then I've got a bunch of properties I can change, of course, so I can modify its name in the standard way. I've got some formatting properties to change its colour. I can change the uh, the standard date format using the drop down list here, so I can use short date and long date, etc. I can also set the min and the max date that's um, available to be selected in the date time picker as well. The calendar controls designed to, oh sorry, the month view controls designed to be a little bit larger. Um, it's designed to show you an entire month at a time, hence its name, of course. So if I just choose to draw one of those on the form, you'll see that it takes up a uh, much larger region on the form, and I can navigate between the different months with the drop down list or the arrows at the top left and top right. And of course, it's got all the standard sort of formatting properties and name properties, etc. If I just run the form then, just to see what that looks like, I can click on its background and click the Run button or press F5. That's what my form looks like. I can click on the drop-down arrow here to see my date time picker calendar, and I can navigate between the different months, click on a date to select it, and likewise with the month view control I can scroll through, and I can even click on the title of the, uh, the calendar control and select a month to jump to rather than navigate through step by step. So they're all kind of elegant, simple little controls to use. I'm just going to close the form down and go back to the form's design view, and then just really quickly I want to show you how you can refer to these, um, these objects in code as well. 
Back in the design view then, I'm just going to draw a simple command button on the form that I'm going to use to click on to display the values that I've selected in both the date time picker and the month view control. So if I just double click on the, on the button, that gives me the event handler for the click event, and all I'd like to do is display a message box that shows me the value of DT picker one. So the name of the object is DT picker one, I could have picked a better name for it, but there we go. And all I need to do is check its value property or read its value property. I can then concatenate that with a, maybe a VB new line character, and at the same time I can also show the month view one dot value. So to access the date that's been selected in either the, the date time picker or the month view control, you simply refer to its value property. It's not very complicated at all. So if I go back to the design view of the form and then click onto its background and then run it, and once again I'm going to select a different date from the list for each one and then let's pick the uh, let's click the command button so there we go we should see the dates displayed exactly as they've been selected in the relevant controls so there you go there's the uh, the big picture there's how you get the date time picker and the month view controls displayed on your form control toolbox and how you can add them into a form and use those to select dates hope you found that useful thanks for watching see you next time if you like what you've seen here, why not head over to the YSL website where you can find loads more free resources including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, see you next time.